Hi folks, this is going to be part one of a three-part series on these Sun Microsystems Sunray Thin Clients. My Sunray Magnum Opus, if you will. In this first video, we're going to deep dive on these Sunray 2s and we'll go over how you set up the server software for hot desking. As you saw in the intro, we're able to use our smart cards, log in and out from these terminals, which is really cool. Up to this point, I've been running the Sunray server software on my Sunfire V120, but in this video, to set ourselves up for the rest of the videos, we're going to get this V240 set up. I think we'll install Solaris 9 on it, get the server software on there, get things up and running, and I'll bring you guys along as we do a from scratch install of the server software and get things working. In the second video, you may have noticed, we've got some other Sunrays sitting here. This is a Sunray 1, the predecessor to these Sunray 2s, graciously on loan from the folks over at the Serial Port. If you haven't checked out their channel, they've got tons of great content, including a video series creating a 90s ISP from scratch. So thanks again to those guys. We'll definitely be diving into this one in the second video. And over here, we have a very interesting Sunray. This is a Sunray 270 from, I think, 2007. We'll dive into the details in the second video. And as you can see, if we zoom in a little bit here, it's trying to connect to IVPN sfbay1.sun.com. So this thing used to be actually used by Sun Microsystems, which is pretty interesting. And then in the third video, we're gonna take a look at connecting these things to Windows. It's possible to connect over RDP to a Windows, Windows server and use these as Windows thin clients, but we're gonna go one step further. This is a Sun PCI 3 that we're gonna put in that V240. The PCI 3 is a card that lets you install Windows and run it from Solaris in your Sunfires. And if you have a look at these ancient texts from some old <laughs> Sun Microsystem Solutions architects, apparently you can get these sun rays talking to the Sun PCI 3 over Windows all from your Solaris box. So yeah, that's gonna be a total nightmare and we'll have a good time trying to set that up in a future video. And of course, all of this would be far less interesting without these. These are Sun Java cards actually used by Sun Microsystems. A viewer named Peter reached out and offered to send me these. They came all the way from the UK. It took our respective country's postal systems like five or six weeks to get these to me. At one point we thought they were lost, but they're here. And as you can see, we're gonna get them working. So a massive thanks to Peter. Being able to have working Java cards and move sessions between all these sun rays is so much more interesting than just logging in on the keyboard. But that's enough talking. Let's set up that V240, dive into these Sunray 2s, and get things working. All right, to kick us off, let's talk a little bit about what these things do when you first get them and plug them in. So right now, it's plugged in, it's on the network, but my server's off, so the server component is missing. These things will just sit here, boot looping, trying to find a server. So remember, there's not actually a hard drive on these things. They're, they're thin clients. So they have a little bit of firmware, a little bit of code that teaches them what to do. So you just saw a loop go. And the moment you plug them in, in fact, they don't even have power buttons. <laughs> you just plug them in, they run their code, and they, and they start trying to go find a server. So these things aren't useful without the server component. And this is what they do. They'll, they'll say, I, error 22B is what that was flashing on the screen. It's saying, I, I can't find a Sunray server. And they just go over and over and over again. And in fact, they won't even recognize smart cards. So you can see the light around the smart card reader doesn't turn on. So when they don't have a server, nothing really works. <laughs> the first thing it tries to do is it really, really wants to connect to a server so that it can start doing something interesting. And speaking of smart cards, in a previous video, I had got these limping along with what I thought were the right cards. So I bought these online. These adhere to an ISO spec. I'll, I'll flash it on the screen here. I don't remember what it is exactly. And I thought I was buying the right cards, but after I got the real Sun branded Java cards from Peter, obviously we have some physical form factor differences here. So now that I have a, a working example, I'm, I'm pretty sure I could probably hunt down a third party card and that would be fine. I might still do that just, you know, curiosity's sake, but obviously these are quite different. And in my opinion, one of the coolest things about these thin clients is this whole smart card deal. So basically you'd have one of these and it would let you badge into work, you know, get you in the building. And then you can plug this into your Sunray workstation, pull it out, walk across the campus, put it in another machine and it saves your session. So we'll get all that set up once we have the server software running on the V240. 
And for this application, I've got this compact 36.4 gig, 15,000 RPM wide Ultra 3 SCSI drive. And got some 3D printed rails so it'll fit in the V240. And we've got the V240 moved up on top of the rack here. There's our drive I was just showing you, so good to go there. And I've actually got a XVR600 video card in here that we're going to mess around with because I think some of the Sunray server management software is web-based. I actually haven't messed around with that. So just in case, <laughs> we'll have that to experiment with. And then around back, got it on the network. This is a serial management port connected up to this MRV secure console server, which will let me remotely manage this server uh, via a terminal on the network. And then of course I'll get it plugged in and we'll get going. All right, let's do some Solaris administration. I had originally mentioned installing Solaris 9 because the software I have from the Sun PCI claims it only is supported up through Solaris 9, 789. But I think I'm going to stick with the devil I know, <laughs> Solaris 10. I've never messed with anything lower than 10. Uh, and so that's what we'll install and we'll deal with that, that software bridge when we need to. So I've got a Proxmox instance here and this is a Solaris VM running inside of it. On the VM, I've mounted a Solaris 10 Spark DVD ISO. So that's ready to go. And we'll hop over to the terminal because it's way easier to deal with this thing <laughs> via the command line. All right, so what we're gonna do is set up something called a jumpstart server. So Solaris has the capability to take one Solaris machine, in this case, that VM that we are looking at here, and set it up as a server for other Sun machines to get their install media from. So basically we'll set this one up as a server and then over on the V240, it'll be able to grab its install media from this thing and install Solaris locally over the net, which is pretty slick. So let's go take a look at the contents of that mounted Solaris 10 install media DVD. This is usually how it's laid out. So inside the Solaris 10 tools folder, there's a bunch of stuff about adding install clients, removing them, setting up an install server. So all Solaris media comes with these utilities to set up a Solaris machine as a jumpstart server. So what we're gonna do is gonna make a directory on the desktop, we'll just call it Spark, and then we'll run setup install server, point it at our brand new directory. And what this thing's gonna do is extract all the install media from the DVD, and then we'll continue from there and get the jumpstart server set up. All right, we're done. That always takes forever, by the way, like 20 minutes. <laughs> so now let's go over to the folder we pointed it at, and we have all the install media here now. So we can go to Slayers 10, Tools. So the next step is to add what's called an install client. And so you have a, an install client configuration for each of the machines that are gonna try to talk to this server, basically, and install Slayers over the net with. So let's take a look at that one. It has a ton of different options, but we're for sure gonna need to go grab the, the MAC address. And I'm gonna, I haven't done this in a while, so there's tons and tons of configuration. You can create all these configuration files to define tons of different aspects uh, of the machine so that it can be basically bootstrapped and installed in a totally headless manner, you know, in a, in a massive IT environment. I'm gonna try to do none of that. And I think hopefully, or at least the bare minimum, and I think it'll just ask us questions interactively in the installer on the other machine, which is totally fine. So let's hop over to the V240. All right, here we are remotely managing that V240 over that serial console cable I was pointing to earlier. We're at something called the OK prompt, the open boot PROM. Uh, this is one of the many prompts Sun needs you to memorize and understand <laughs> to administer these uh, Sun enterprise machines. But I have another video where I go over all that in great detail. I'll, I'll put it in the description. Suffice it to say, the OK prompt lets us define boot options so we can boot it over the net from this prompt, basically. So uh, first thing first, we're going to say banner. We're going to get this Ethernet address. And so I'm going to plug this in to the add install client command, and we'll see if we can get things going here. All right, I'm going to try it with the bare minimum configuration. I've never done it this way. Add install client the name, 
and the platform. All right, I think that worked. <laughs> so the key to success here is assigning your client name. I'm calling it V240 and IP. You can see I already did this for my V120 back when the last time I tried this out. And then you'll also need an entry in the ethers file. And you can see I did this for the V120, obviously. This was the, the ethernet MAC address for the, the V240. So now let's head over to the V240 and see if this zero configuration jumpstart server essentially is going to work for us. All right, here we are. Not very optimistic about this. So you issue boot net. So tell it to boot over the net. And I want to actually install. Well, here we go. <laughs> I think it's working. Yeah, there's four network interfaces on that machine. And it's starting from the one I don't have it plugged into. So it's got to, it's got to work its way down, timing out three of these until it gets to the one that's actually connected, I think. So I'll be back when this is up. Well, here we are uh, at the Solaris installer. <laughs> so that's great. That What we just did is the simplest, I think, directions I've ever seen online for how to jumpstart one of these things. So if you're doing this just in your home lab, messing around with old sun stuff, do it that way. Don't give it any parameters. This is perfect. So uh, let's, we'll, we'll breeze through this and I'll be back. All right, that worked great. Here we are. Fresh install Solaris 10 on this thing with a 36 gig drive. Let's get the Sunray server software on here. Believe it or not, you actually go get the latest Sunray software from Oracle. <laughs> they, are, they are still hosting it. So we're just gonna grab the latest one, 5.4, and I'll go off and get this downloaded. All right, got the latest version, 5.4 on this machine, let's unzip it. Back in a moment. All right, all wrapped up. There are over 1500 files in that zip archive for some reason. So let's see, let's head over here. And it should be as simple as running UT setup. We might have to change the version of Java on this thing. I've had to do that in the past, but we'll see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this Solaris install came with Java 1.5. I need 1.6. I'll be back. All right, got Java 1.6 on here. Let's give this another shot. So it's asking where Java 1.6 is. I've got it sitting in this folder. So in a previous video, I, I ran through this, so I won't make you watch it again. I'll catch up with you after it's done. All right, I think this one's important. Enabling LAN access for Sunray clients. We're gonna say yes. I think that actually lets them connect with the server. So there we go. Let's fire up some of these Sunrays and see if we can't get them talking to this fresh install. All right, let's plug this thing in. Also, design flaw. There's one USB port on the front and one on the back and you need a keyboard and mouse if you're you know, an average office worker using the desktop, and so you'd need one of these keyboards with a hub in it or something. I don't know, it's kind of dumb that you always have to have something coming off the front. Anyway, let's plug this in. Like I said, there's no power switch. You just plug it in and it goes to town. Let's see what happens. All right, that was like 25 seconds I cut out there. That was easy. <laughs> Anyone can do this. And it says V240. It's definitely the fresh stuff we set up. The V120 is off anyway. Let's, I don't think it lets you log in with root, but let's try it anyway. Hey, 
Yeah, not on system console root login rejected. That's fine. All right, let's go set up a user. All right, let's get some users set up. We'll consult the the Bible here. Just kidding. I'm gonna, I googled it. Uh, we'll make a couple to play around with. User add. There's one. The passwords are the usernames. In case you ever find yourself on my Sunray network. All right, I did not log in with any of those users. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, Java's fine. It's as simple as that. I would say, anecdotally, this feels smoother and faster than the V120. Okay, so now without any configuration, I've, I've never done this before. Let's try throwing in one of these cards, just to see what it does. It lit up, it logged us out. <laughs> okay, let's try it at the prompt. Still logged out. All right, that's fine. So that's what happens if you do no configuration at all. Let's set this thing up as a dedicated card reader. We'll get some values off these cards. I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll tie them to some users. All right, after we installed that software in the opt sun wut sbin folder, we've got all the utilities we need to manage our Sunray server. So I think ut desktop is a useful one with dash L. Yes, so it knows one Sunray is connected. That's its unique ID. I think it's just the Mac address. And we can use that to configure this thing as a dedicated card reader. So the way you do this when you're setting up these Java cards is you need something to read the unique identifier off of the cards. And Sun did something pretty slick. Instead of needing to buy a dedicated reader appliance or something, you can just configure one of your Sunrays temporarily to be a reader, which is pretty cool. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to read a couple values off these cards and save them. Then we'll, then we'll apply them to users. All right, so I think it's UT Reader. A lot of these have pretty good names. Uh, let's say, help me, there we go. Yes, okay, so UT Desktop to get our unique identifier. That's this guy right here. And then I can say UT Reader add that one as a reader. And now it says, just gotta restart the services. UT start, a cold restart is fine. Now we'll pop a couple of these cards in and read their values. All right, service is restarted and you grab your desktop ID of the reader. I think it's ut user dash r for read that one. I do have a token on already. And there we go. This is the unique identifier of that card that's in there right now. Couldn't get this far in the, the other video. Um, let's save these. So let's call this tokens. Okay. I'm going to read another one and we'll be right back. Okay. To add users, we go back to the UT user command and it's a big one. It does all sorts of stuff. As you can see, it spitting out all its options here, but what we'll do, this is a file that has all my tokens. Let's try assigning the first one to the club user, which is UT user dash a for add then you take the token id it has a bunch of optional stuff we don't care about so you have to pass commas one comma at the end okay now we can say ut user dash l I, th I think yeah so it thinks that token is assigned to the cloud user while we're here let's do the other one All right, now we need to actually disconfigure the reader. All right, so ut reader dash c just takes them all off the list. And now we do another ut start c, let it do its thing. Let's try it out. All right, here's that first card that we assigned to Clab. I, I'm not sure it's gonna have a lenient enough policy to let us just log in, we'll see. So yeah, it wants the username, it's not recognizing 
that this card should let me log in. So let's see if it'll do anything after one login. Pull it out, log this out, and that makes sense. All right, so it recognized that I'm Clab, but I have a session lock. So that's pretty reasonable behavior. You have to log in once. Let's pull something up, this computer, leave that there. We'll see if it takes our session over here. I got my, got the home office set up here again. <laughs> Yeah, okay. It says Sunray Session Lock, Clab, knows who I am. Let's see if we can make a looser policy. This makes sense in a realistic, you know, setup. <laughs> but I'm in my basement. I don't want to type in my password. So let's go see if there's a more permissive policy. Okay, after a little bit of research, there's UT policy. This is our current one. Maybe we can learn a little bit about it. This is the default that got set up. It's got a bunch of options in here. Some pertaining to disable hot desk authentication uh, and so on. So, I believe what we want is ut policy a dash c both dash g dash capital D. And I'm sure this will be a restart. Interesting. It, you can do a warm restart. Let's try that just for fun. <laughs> it just boot looped them all. This is what they do during restarts. They lose connection with the server as you would expect, and they keep trying to get back in. All right, about a minute later, server's back up. We don't, I don't know if this warm restart's gonna do it, but let's, let's give it a shot. So, the Clab user's card. Yeah, look at that, no password. <laughs> yes, okay. I'll point you over here. Oh yeah, so yeah, the policy is the key. Let's see what happens with, we've never logged in with this one, the YouTube user. Oh, you must, so you must need to establish a session. Let me, let me, I'll throw Clab back on here. I'm like never going to get tired of this. Oh, so close. So this is interesting. It knew who we were. Maybe I never associated it. Let me, one second. All right, get ready to have your mind blown. Hot desking, baby. And I'm not very impressed with how I accomplished this. So in addition to the policy reset, which according to documentation, it should be all I had to do, unless I'm misunderstanding, I had to add sun sunray utx lock pref equals blank and export it in the DT profile of each user. <laughs> so got to be a better way to do that. Anyway, let's see if we can get the remote management GUI working. All right. So supposedly there's a remote web GUI that you can access but you have to configure it with Tomcat. So I've Tomcat was quite in vogue at this time, reasonable. Maybe it still is, I don't know. I haven't dealt with it since my Jenkins days. Uh, let's do utconfig dash W. I skipped this in the initial install because I didn't know where Tomcat was. And so yeah, configure the web administration. Yes, I will. And it's not in their default, at least on this distribution it's in here so sure we do not want secure connections <laughs> that's fine yes there's no way it's going to be this easy <laughs> let's go check it out uh it's kind of working i think it needs 5.5 see how that goes and yeah here's all the logs with very, very tall Java stacks complaining about XML files and yeah, the, the pretty classic experience. So I'll poke around a little bit. <laughs> Whoa. There was Tomcat 5. 
on that machine. So I pointed it at that instead. Is this just going to work? Oh, okay. Maybe I need to make an admin user. One second. All right. Apparently I set up that admin user when I installed the server and I have no memory of that. So <laughs> I did, however, guess the password. The, this is so, it just works. I thought this was going to take me hours. Yeah, this is the V240 server. Let's just poke around here for a little bit. And it's working just in a normal browser. What? I wonder what's going on. This must be a Java applet of some sort. Oof. Yeah, I'm sure. Anyway, yeah, you can restart the server. Let's go look at our sessions. She's a little slow. Yeah, check this out. We can see the tokens. This is very slick. In fact, if you just wanted to get experimenting with this right away, just, yeah, just set this up. This was super simple. Tokens, log files. Yeah, everything going on. Let's look at, does it, what's it know about the sun rays themselves? Very cool, okay. Let's point you at the YouTube logged in user and kill his session. All right, gonna click terminate session. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so cool. So cool. Love it. Well, there you have it. Start to finish on getting these things set up and hot desking. Nothing makes you feel more stupid than trying to put that in on camera and be all slick about it. Anyway, <laughs> it works. A little finicky with the sessions, um, but I think we got it working pretty good. And this sets us up for the uh, next couple videos here. If you haven't already, definitely gonna wanna subscribe. We're gonna be having a look at this Sunray 270 with the monitor actually built into the unit, as well as this Sunray 1 generously on loan from the folks over at the Serial Port. And again, massive thanks to Peter for sending me these cards. We're gonna be putting them to good use, as you can see already. In the meantime, hope you found that interesting, that kind of start to front <laughs> tutorial to get us going. Definitely more coming on these sun rays. I'll see you in the next one.